On the measurement piece, that Peter Drucker line, like what can't be measured, can't be managed. I'm big into measurement. And so I'm wondering if there are any specific devices or wearable technology that you recommend. I wear an aura ring for measuring my sleep. I wear an Apple watch to check physical activity, heart rate, things like that. But I'd love to hear what some of your recommendations are. Those two things are a good start. I do the same. Uh, I do blood tests, which I think eventually will be a chip under the skin, but for now it's, you need a, some blood drawn. I've been doing that for 11 years, uh, actually more. Uh, and I've been able to see things that have gone out of whack or are trending upwards when I didn't want them to and immediately corrected them. Mm -hmm. um, this is not what your doctor will do for you. Uh, they're, they're not, not in the business of optimizing you. They're in the business of treating a disease. And if you don't have type two diabetes, they're not gonna give you a type two diabetes drug that would undoubtedly prevent type two diabetes. Um, so I take a different approach. The blood tests, you, your listeners might be saying, well, how do I do that? Well, there, there are companies that will do this. Um, one, and in full disclosure, uh, I am a, an advisor and a very small co-owner of this company. So, you know, take, take my advice as, as you see fit. Um, it's called Inside Tracker. Uh, it's in the US, but you're also, if let's say you're anywhere else in the world, you can upload your own data. Uh, you, I, I, I have a, a health service. I advise people on things. And one of my clients is in Turkey and they don't have Inside Tracker, but the doctor does these 34 blood tests and we enter the data in and we look at it and see what the, the AI tells us. And what's different about that is that a doctor cannot store a billion data points in their head. This company can with hundreds of thousands of, of individuals and mm -hmm. scientific papers. And this thing, you know, it, it, it has a, you know, help from scientists and doctors uh, but we scientists and doctors need help these days from machines. So that's one thing. That's, that's true monitoring. I've done a blood glucose monitor. Um, I don't do it anymore because I've already learned enough about my body that I don't need to, to watch it and become obsessed with that. I've learned the type of foods such as white rice and grapes that send my glucose up tremendously. Um, and I also learned from, that I'm one of the people where my blood sugar goes up early in the morning, which explains why I have no need for breakfast anyway. Yeah, there's a, there's a very clear, I guess, example of this. Um, the difference between what a doctor right, might recommend and what's actually the best for us that, that I read, I think, in one of Dave Asprey's books where he said, look at your hormones. If you go to a traditional primary care doctor, when you're 50, they're looking at the average for a 50-year-old male, not the average for a 20-year-old male, which maybe is your ideal self. And so by supplementing with hormones and getting your body back to that age, you're now feeling better. You have more energy, but a doctor would never, ever, ever make that recommendation. A, a traditional doctor would never make that recommendation. And so I'm sure there are a lot of areas of our health uh, where changes like that are probably necessary. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my, my doctor and my dentist, uh, they, they're scared when I'm coming in because I will ask <laughs> oh, about stuff. Um, such as, is it worth fixing teeth? Y yes, I, I expect to be around a lot longer than you think. Uh, is it worth giving me medicine to correct my cholesterol levels at age 29? My doctor literally said, well, you're not old enough to worry about that yet. And, and I totally freaked out. I said, why do we want to wait till I have heart disease? Give it to me now. And fortunately he did. Um, but you know, when I was 29, that wasn't something that doctors tended to do. For young people, so that I'm um, not every doctor. You know, uh, there are a lot of doctors that that are changing their ways. I think more of them need to think about the future uh, and to try to help younger people stay fitter for longer, not just wait until there's something to treat. 